Nadine from DIY Sweets. Today I'm going to show you how to make pie. A lot of people are really afraid to make pie because they think that the crust is really hard to make. So I'm going to show you today just how easy it can be and you're going to get a delicious flaky crust and you won't have to buy those ones at the store that are pre-made that really aren't that great tasting. So to start out with what we're going to do is we're going to dump the flour into our bowl. After we've dumped the flour in, in this um, bowl I have this, some sugar, salt, baking powder, and powdered milk. And I'm going to dump that in there too. And then I'm just going to just kind of mix it in well so that all of the ingredients are mixed together. Now, if you don't have a pastry bread, you can use a fork or you can use a couple of knives. Either way it's going to work. These really though, you can buy it at any grocery store and they only cost a few dollars. So I would recommend getting this, but if not, you can use the other. Now once I've got the flour in there, I'm going to put all of my fats in there. And this recipe, it calls for lard, shortening, and butter. This is kind of the secret that makes this a really good recipe. It makes it taste so good. Um, most recipes only call for shortening. So this is a little bit different than any uh, uh, pie crust recipes you've made before. But it really is going to make the difference. Now once I have those in, I'm just going to keep pushing down and breaking up the fats and mixing it with the dry ingredients. And you might have to pull it off the pastry blender and go back in. In the end, we want this to kind of look like a meal. We want it to be like clumps of flour and shortening together and not any of the really powdery flour. The important thing to remember about pie crust is that if you overwork it, especially once you add the liquor to it, it's going to be tough and it's not going to taste good. So at this point, while you're just mixing this in, make sure it's mixed in really good. Because when you get to add in the water to it, you really only want to work it enough to get it to stick together. Once it's holding together, you don't want to work it anymore or you're going to have a tough pie crust. And that's really the secret to making a pie. Let me get that off. As you look at this, you can see that it's not really powdery. It's got the... It, kind of looks like a dough that's not quite sticking together. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to take the half a cup of water and dump it in here and then mix it. And with this, I may find that I need more water. If I do, I've got some extra water here that I can put in just a little bit at a time. But I want to work this half a cup first. So I'm just going to dump it in there and then work this just a little bit, start it getting together. And then at this point, once I've got the water somewhat worked in, and you see it's really sticking together, I am going to just take the pastry blender out and I'm just with my hand going to mix in the rest of that flour. Now I'm not trying to get a big kneading and work up the gluten in the flour. I'm just trying to mix the remaining flour into the stuff. Now, because I am making this, this pie for a lot of people, I actually did a double recipe so that I could just do the pie crust once and get two pies out of it. Okay, so that's really all I want to work it. I don't want to work it any more than that. 
I'm going to roll my pie out on this mat because it's going to help it not stick. I do want to still put some flour on here. And I want to put some flour on my rolling pin. Then I'm just going to put my dough right there. And you'll notice as I roll it, I am not pushing really hard. I'm just trying to get it to be round shape. And I want this to go all the way to the edge. Because if I don't take this all the way to the edge on that part, it's not going to be big enough for my pie tin. Now, you don't have to use a mat. You can use just your counter and just put a lot of flour on it. The reason I prefer to use the mat is then I can just lift it up like this and put it on the pie tin, in the pie tin. If I don't have a mat, then I have to roll it here and hope it doesn't stick. But since I have a mat, I just am able to put it on, in the pie tin. And sometimes it's easier to stick that pie tin right on the thing and then turn it over and then peel your mat off. Now, pie dough is very forgiving because you're not going to see most of it. Most of it is going to be down in the pie. So if it tears like it is right there, I can just go like this and mold it back together. Now, I want to push it down to make sure it is totally filling pie shell. Now as I'm doing this, I can fill air bubbles, but that's going to be really easy to fix. I'm just going to take a fork and poke holes in it, which you want anyway, because then it cooks laying flat. So let me get my fork. So I have my fork here, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to go along the bottom and poke holes. And that's going to provide air for this. Now I did not spray this pan down because Pie crust has so much fat in it anyway, it's not going to stick. And then I also go around the side and poke coats. And this helps to make sure that it's laying down flat. After I do that, I just kind of double check, make sure it's all down flat. And then, if you notice, pies have a really fancy edge a lot of time around it. This is a really quick, simple, and still looks really nice edge that I do on my pies. I just right here at the end. I just push the fork in like this and I want to make sure it's kind of slanting down because the pie crust might shrink a little bit when you cook it and so making sure it goes a little bit over the edge of the pie is going to help it so it doesn't shrink. Now if you're going to cook it with a filling like I'm going to with these pies it's not going to shrink as much anyway but sometimes you have to cook the pie crust and then put a filling in it because the filling really doesn't get cooked or the filling only gets cooked for a couple of minutes. But with the ones I'm making today, um, the filling's going to be in there the whole time the pie crust is cooking. So um, it's not as crucial, but I still like it. You see it's still going over the edge. You cannot see the pie plate at all. It is going over the edge. And I am just using that fork again to break off the excess pie crust. Now, I, as I said, I made a double batch so that I could do two pies. Um, so after I get the other one covered, I will come back and show you how to make the fillings for the pies. This pie that I'm going to make is a pecan pie. Pecan pie is so delicious, and you're going to be surprised at just how quick and easy it is to make this pecan pie. So the first thing we are going to do is we're just going to put three eggs in a blender. And then we're going to also add melted butter, sugar,
chicken. Salt. And some corn syrup. Now I just want to put the lid on the blender and I want to mix it. I just let this run until it's completely mixed. Okay, we now have that completely mixed. All we're going to do is dump in the nuts. And this time, I don't want to mix them till they're all ground. I just want to break the nuts up. So I'm going to do chop, little chop those nuts up. And that's it. That's all it is for the filling. Now I'm just going to take this filling and I'm going to pour it into this pie shell. Now the pie shell I have is actually not a 9 inch. It's like a 12 inch. So I may find when I pour this in that it's not quite full enough and then I would have to just make a little bit more to finish filling it. But if you follow this recipe, it should be plenty for a nine inch pie crust. I did one and a half the recipe, hoping that would be enough to um, fill the pie crust. So I'm just gonna take this and I'm just gonna dump it into my pre-made pie crust. As you see, it really didn't take that long to make it. So let me show you. There's my pie. It really doesn't look full enough. It's only about halfway full. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mix some more up so that this is full. And then after I get that full, I will show you what we do on the top so that you can see some beautiful pecans on the top of the pie before you bake it. Our pie plate is now full with the pie filling that I made. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these uh, pecan halves and I'm just going to lay them on top of the pie. And this is going to give it that pretty beautiful look that you see when you buy those pecan pies in the store. And then it's going to have that delicious, better than what you could probably get in the store flavor, inside on our pecan. So you're not trying to push it in. You want it to actually just sit on top of the pie filling. And it may um, dip down a little bit in. That's okay. But the main thing is you're wanting this, and they don't have to be touching. You just want to have enough of them to cover the top. And the pie filling that's there will darken up to be closer to the color of the pecans that are on top. And that's why we don't have to have the whole top totally filled and touching each other. We just want to show that there's a lot of pecans there so we can tell this is a pecan pie. If you use a regular pie shell that's either 9 or 8 inches, you will not need to put near as many pecans on. The recipe calls for um, about 15 or so, so on top. I like to put, even when I'm using the smaller pie tins, I like to put more than that on because as I said, I like to have the whole top covered with pecans. And 15 doesn't really do that, but you can do just 15 and it would work. It just isn't going to have quite the same look as when you cover the whole top. So that's really all you need to do is have the top covered like that. And then I'm going to stick this in the oven for 15 minutes at 425 degrees. I'm then going to turn the oven down to 350 and 
cook it for another 25 minutes. Now with this being a bigger pie, it's probably going to take me another 35 minutes or more. But with this, you want to stick a knife in it and see if it comes out clean. When the knife comes out clean, then it is ready to be removed from the oven. You don't want to take it out before because it won't set up if it is not cooked all the way through. This isn't one that as it cools, it's going to all of a sudden set up. So you really want to make sure that, that knife comes out clean before you take it out of the oven. Our pecan, pecan pie has now cooled. And so here is our finished pecan pie. It is ready for you to cut and serve up. Again, this is Nadine with DIY Sweets and enjoy your pecan pie. <music>